Okay, so now we're back underneath the Cobra. We're gonna go ahead and, and take off the rest of this bell housing. So it's just these bolts that are going around and it's a lot easier to get to them now with the rest of that transmission out of the way. So on the front of the, the transmission you have two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the dust cover on. So you can go ahead and remove those. Okay, so with the dust shield bolts out of the front and all of the bolts around the bell housing out, we can remove it. The two bolts, not at the very top, but the next ones down are the longer bolts and then the rest of them are all the same size. Okay, go ahead and drop that down. So next you'll drop down the dust shield. As long as it's off of the dowels that are on the side, there's two dowel pins on each side, then that dust shield can just come right down. Now in the front crank pulley of the car, you can put a 14 millimeter hex and then a breaker bar to hold this in place. Then come back here and remove these 13 millimeter bolts for the pressure plate and the same when it's time to remove the flywheel bolts. Next we're going to remove the pressure plate and so to do that you have uh, six of these 13 millimeter bolts. Be careful with this because it is heavy. Uh, it is sitting on here on little dowel pins so it does stay on okay but once you get those bolts off it can fall down on you. So just be very careful about that. So now that all the bolts are out, you can use a screwdriver to pry this pressure plate away from the flywheel. Okay. So I just had one of these little pieces of the pilot bearing shoot out at me. So definitely time for a new pilot bearing. Now in this project, we did not take the flywheel to be resurfaced. This is a pretty low mileage car, didn't have a lot of wear on it. Um, it is something that uh, we still would recommend doing though, if you're gonna be uh, changing the clutch out. And so you can have it resurfaced, take it to a shop and ask them to turn it or have it machined, they'll know what you're talking about. And um, in this video, we just uh, didn't do that. So once again, you can take this 14 millimeter hex and put it in the front of the crankshaft and hold that still while you break the flywheel bolts loose. They're gonna be 17 millimeter and there's eight of them on the Cobra and Mach 1. If you don't want to put the breaker bar in the front of the crank, you can use an impact gun on this part for removing it, but uh, I would definitely not use it for tightening it. With all the bolts removed, you can also remove this little ring plate. Now the flywheel will come off. It's only being held on by the dowel pins, so you want to be very careful. It is, um, it's not too heavy on the Cobra since it's an aluminum one, but um, you just want to rock it back and forth and get it off of those dowel pins. Okay, a few taps on the back side of it with a rubber mallet and the flywheel comes right off. So next to remove the pilot bearing, I really like this 10 millimeter socket that tapers down. It's worked uh, several times for me. And what we're gonna do is fill the pilot bearing full of grease, and then we're gonna go ahead and stick this in. It fits perfectly, then pound on the back of this old extension. Now you can see it's gotten its use. And uh, by pushing in, it's gonna use hydraulic pressure with that grease to push the, the bearing out. Okay, so next with a grease gun, you want to fill that whole entire center area full of grease, as much as you can. So next you're going to take that 10 millimeter socket attached to the extension and you're going to push it right into the back of uh, that pilot bearing where all the grease is. And you're going to hit the back of that with a hammer. Some people say you can even stuff bread and I've even used a wet rag and that kind of thing in there in the past. So as long as you have grease in there, we just shoved a paper towel kind of behind it. We're just going to be pounding it away. But you just want that grease farthest in there so that as you pound it, it's pushing the uh, back of the pilot bearing. Okay, so we've just been pushing this in. 
removing the socket, adding more paper towels and grease, whatever we need to jam it in there. And the key with these is to just not use a small hammer. We're using a nice heavy weight and that's really the key behind it. So go ahead and give it a nice hit. There, it's coming out, keep going. Add more grease and paper. Okay, so as you pound this in far enough, the whole pilot bearing will come right out. You're just left with the crankshaft. Nothing, looks good. Nice and clean. So this is the huge wad of toilet paper and grease that we just kept shoving into the back of this pilot bearing. And so you just keep adding it and punching it in and eventually it will force that bearing out. Okay, so this is all toilet paper and grease that we've shoved in there. It all will just go in behind it and push the bearing from the back. So here's our pilot bearing. I just took this out of the freezer. It's been in there for a while. It's frozen cold. That's going to help it slide in a little bit better. And to drive it in, we have this 26 millimeter socket and it fits perfectly on the edges of this. Because on this, you want to make sure you're putting it pressure on this outer rim. You do not want to touch the actual bearing part of it right here. So a 26 millimeter socket fits perfectly on this, so we're going to use that to drive it straight into the crankshaft. So you just want to line up that pilot bearing as square as you can and just tap it in gently in the beginning so that you know that it's going straight. Uh, you don't want it to go in at an angle and get all messed up. So go ahead and just drive it in. Okay, right there. You can hear it and kind of feel it bottom out. When it's all said and done, there will be a small lip right here that you can feel it. So um, basically, you just want to make sure that it's in there good and straight. And uh, you know, you'll hear it as it's bottoming, bottoming out against the crankshaft. Okay, so as we're lifting the flywheel back on, you're going to want to spin it until all the holes line up. And yeah, that looks pretty good right there, but you can get it pretty close and you can still have one or two of those bolts off because these holes aren't all perfectly um, spaced. So with the flywheel up, now replace that uh, other small little disc that goes on uh, the front of the flywheel. And right now we're just going to run in two of these flywheel bolts to hold everything on. But after that, we're going to put Loctite on our flywheel bolts and we're going to start running them in, doing the star pattern. So go ahead and uh, put some Loctite on each of those and uh, run them all in. And we're going to tighten them, tighten them down, crisscross pattern. So now we're going to torque down the flywheel bolts using the star pattern. And in the front of the crank on the Cobra, you have a 14 millimeter hex that we're going to be putting in to hold the crank still as we crank and uh, torque these bolts down. So with our 14 millimeter hex in the front of the crankshaft for the Cobra, if it's not a Cobra, you have to just use a different socket. Um, anyway, we're holding that still with this breaker bar and in the rear, we're torquing down all the flywheel bolts in a crisscross pattern to uh, 59 to 62 foot pounds. Okay, so our flywheel bolts are on and torqued to 59 to 62 foot pounds in that range. We did the crisscross pattern so that uh, each bolt across from each other was tightened in that sequence. Now we're cleaning the flywheel. If we want it to be completely clean, we're using brake parts cleaner. And next we'll be putting on our clutch disc and then the pressure plate. So now on our pressure plate you also want to make sure that its mating surface is completely clean. And so we're using brake parts cleaner and cleaning that up. 
So when you're looking at your clutch disc, you'll notice it's completely flat on one side and it comes out right here on the other side. So this is the side that's facing outward. Sometimes it'll show flywheel side and there's a sticker on it saying which side, but this one uh, didn't even have that. So just remember the flat side goes flat against the flywheel. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this up here and we're using our clutch alignment tool that came with the kit. And be careful with those because I've actually had them come before and it's been too big to even go into the pilot bearing. So um, we're using our alignment tool here. And we're just pushing it flat, flush in there. There we are. So you can see the alignment tool mimics the input shaft of the transmission. And so it has the splines on it, but uh, you're pushing that in in order to keep everything centered. So while holding the clutch disc in here like this, we lifted our pressure plate up and you want to line it up just how it came off where you have uh, dowel pins right here that are coming through and then uh, the bolts will go back into the old holes. So you have three total dowel pins on the flywheel and that's what we're using to have the pressure plate mount against uh, the flywheel. Okay, we're just tightening these down to 24 foot-pounds using the star pattern, crisscross. It's not a lot of torque on those ones, but we did put Loctite on them as well. Okay, next you're just gonna take that dust shield and hang it up on here. And we're putting it on the dowel pins on each side, as you can see there. And that's how it's hanging in place. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and lift up our bell housing and set it up on top. Okay, so all of our bell housing bolts are on. Uh, we especially made sure up at the very top that we had that bracket in place for the bolt to go through and hold the O2 sensors where they need to go. So that bracket has been driven in correctly on each side. And the rest of our bell housing bolts are also in now. So now we're gonna put grease on our clutch fork. So uh, there's several places that we're gonna to wanna to grease this. We're gonna to wanna to put uh, some grease on the actual forks here and here. You wanna make sure where the pivot ball goes has plenty of grease as well. Then on the reverse side, you wanna put uh, some grease on the very top of those uh, little hill area there on, on both sides there. And now we're ready to put on our throwout bearing. On the throwout bearing, you want to put some grease on the face of it where it's going to be contacting the diaphragm fingers. And you also want to put some grease on the uh, inside of it. So grease it up real good on the inside as well. Um, this is more for sliding back and forth on uh, the retainer sleeve. Yeah. So next we're going to put the throw out bearing on the actual clutch fork. And so what you want to pay attention to is if you look at the throw out bearing it has a little peak to it. So you want that to be facing this area. And then as you slide the bearing in on the reverse side you want to make sure that both of these forks There you go, that the bearing slides in on both of those forks. So that's how it should look. You want to make sure that it's in just like that. Okay, so before installing the clutch fork, you're going to come in and put grease on the input shaft. You want it right on the nose of it there, where it's going to be going in and going into the pilot bearing. You also want grease on the actual retaining sleeve here, even though we put grease on the bearing on the inside where it's going to be riding, uh, it's good just to grease up both of these. And truth be told, as you're using your clutch here and the bearing sliding on this, it's probably going to push some of this grease off. And then uh, you can also put some down in the splines of the actual input shaft.
And then uh, the pivot ball needs a good amount of grease on the front of it too. Okay, so now you're ready to take your clutch fork with the throwout bearing installed and, and slide it over the retainer sleeve. And then you just want to make sure you get those two forks in there behind the pivot ball and push upward. There you go. Now your clutch fork is installed. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put some grease in on the splines on the actual clutch disc. Make sure you don't get it on the disc so it's you don't want it to slip. But you just want to get a little bit of it there. It doesn't hurt to put it where the throwout bearing is going to be making contact to the pressure plate or the diaphragm fingers either. And uh, we put it on the front of the throwout bearing anyway, so a little bit of grease doesn't hurt. All right, so underneath the car, you want to line up the splines on your input shaft as closely as you can to how the clutch is situated up there. And you're just going to line it up, lift the transmission, and basically just put the transmission up in there. It's good to have a jack nearby so that once this is up and in there, you can put a floor jack to support the bottom of the transmission while you go to tighten all the bolts. But uh, it's a lot easier on uh, these T56 transmissions because the bell housing's already on. So we'll just lift it up, line it in, and tighten the bolts down. Okay, so we have the transmission back up and in. We've reconnected all of our 15 millimeter bolts going around the side. And also, uh, we're doing that top bolt that was difficult to get to, so just like the way we took it out, we have the extension running towards the back. And uh, it's all on there nice and tight. Uh, if you have a problem with the transmission lining up when you're trying to get it in, you can move the crankshaft left and right if you have that 14 millimeter hex, as we did, and that can help line up those splines. Uh, you just wanna slide it back up in here and tighten all those bolts down. Okay, so then you want to go back through and put your harness back into its connector holes here. And you just want to plug in everything back to where it was. Got that reverse sol solenoid switch up here at the top that you can, you can plug in from inside the car or here. Either way. And then this other one right here in the back. I don't know if you can see that, but you just want to... Plug these back in. So then over here on the passenger side, you have a few more connections to make. Run your clutch cable back through the transmission there. Put on your C-clip to hold it in place. Make sure that you have your clutch cable going through your clutch fork. Okay, so with your clutch cable looped back through here and then locked into its place, we still have a jam nut here we're working with because this is an aftermarket one. Um, but anyway, uh, we're actually gonna leave this cover off uh, as we drive the car around, but just to show that we do need to put it back on. So you have the uh, dust cover here that just slides over. And it's going to go back into that little channel there. And at the top you have this 3 8 inch uh, s screw right here. And that just goes into the top there to hold this dust shield in place. But yeah, we're going to have it off as we're adjusting this and driving it around. Next we're going to lift the transmission up and reconnect our transmission cross member bolts. Two on each side. All right, make sure that your transmission bolts are all tight here for that rear cross member. Next, we're gonna lift the drive shaft into place. So um, with this, if you're trying to line it up to the rear wheels, you can remove this and twist it back and forth uh, to get it lined up. But we're just gonna be uh, basically trying to line it up at the back wheels first.
Okay, so our drive shaft is in right now, but we don't have it uh, attached there at the back quite yet. We just have one bolt holding it in place. And what we're gonna do next is put the exhaust back on. And once it's in place, then we'll lift the rear of the car in the air and put the drive shaft back on the same way we took it off. Okay, next we're putting the starter back in. It's pretty simple, it just slides right back into its housing and put the uh, bolts back in. Next we're ready to lift the exhaust up into place. Uh, just make sure your exhaust gasket is up in there. We put a piece of electrical tape up in there to hold it in place and uh, should be good. So we'll lift this up in there and bolt everything down. So the front bolts are in and all connected. Now we're moving here to the back. Sometimes it helps to put a jack here to hold the mid pipe up in order to get the cap back connected. Next we're going to connect the rear O2 sensors. And so we're just plugging these back in. One on each side. And then for the fronts, a little trick I like to use is to twist them counterclockwise so that the wires bind up the incorrect way and then when you go to put them and screw them back into these holes, uh, the wires should end up straight. So you, you don't want to just put these in and tighten it or it'll, it'll kink all those wires. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it counterclockwise a few revolutions. Put it in, and then as it straightens out, your wires will be straight. Then take your 7 8 inch wrench and finish tightening these O2 sensors back down. Reconnect the front cross mount bar, two 15 millimeter bolts on those. Those are the self locking ones. So now we're going to go ahead and lift the front of the car in the air, remove the jack stands, and put them back on the back so we can reattach the drive shaft. Okay, so now we're just lining up our drive shaft and putting the bolts in one by one. And back to our old process here of pulling the e-brake up, tightening down a bolt, letting the e-brake down, spinning the wheels to spin the drive shaft for the next bolt, tightening down the next bolt, etc. So next we'll just be pouring four quarts of this Pennzoil Synchro Mesh into the top of the transmission here. So with the shifter removed you can just pour it straight in that way. If you do want to make it messy you can undo the fill plug on the side of the transmission and pump it up into the side but this is a lot easier way. So inside the car you want to run a nice silicone bead around the uh, transmission where the shifter is going to mount. Okay, so lower your shifter into place. Also, uh, I have a good friend of mine, Cobra Bob, makes a really nice shifter gasket if you want to Google him. It's a nice silicone pre-cut one. Just a little shout out there. Just want to put on all the washers and the nuts for the shifter. They're 13 millimeter. Alright, just tighten these all down. Next, install your rubber shift boot. Uh, remember, in this case, we've removed it from its bezel, so this may be one piece on your car. But that's the next piece you, you want to put on. Install all four of your bolts here for this bezel, eight millimeter. All right, next, connect the positive battery terminal. Tighten it down with that eight millimeter wrench. Now connect the uh, negative terminal with the ground. 